Illinois is situated in the heart of the American Midwest, and it's a charming mix of city life and rural landscapes. It's known as the Prairie State because of its vast expanses of flat land. Over 60% of the state is covered in farmland, so agriculture plays a significant role in Illinois' economy. They're known for their production of crops like corn and soybeans. Now, there are a few natural wonders in this state, one being Starved Rock State Park, where ancient sandstone canyons and waterfalls await visitors. But what attracts most out-of-towners is, of course, the vibrant city of Chicago, also known as the Windy City. Depending on the year, Chicago ranks as the third or fourth largest city in the U.S. There are a lot of people and there's lots to do. Of course, it's situated on the scenic shore of Lake Michigan, so it's beautiful. <laughs> Chicago is also a hot spot for art enthusiasts. It's not only home to world-class museums and iconic architecture, it's also the home city of today's guest, Jackie Katzis, who is an ESL teacher and a well-known YouTuber from the channel Ask Jackie. We'll begin today's episode by getting to know this wonderful Chicagoan, and then we'll discover Chicago and Illinois with her. You'll hear about Jackie's experience with tornadoes, learn the nuances of the Chicago accent, you'll hear about the food, and you'll get a local's perspective on how to make the most out of your next trip to Chicago. This is a fun one. Let's do it. Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everybody. We're here today with Jackie Katzis. Is that how you pronounce your name? Perfect. Yes. Or Jacqueline, I found. Is that your full name? Yeah, Jacqueline, but I don't ever really go by Jacqueline. <laughs> cool. So Jackie. Ja Jackie is here right now. She is an English teacher originally from Chicago, Illinois, but you have lived around the world. You speak multiple languages. I want to get to know you, and I want to get to know where you're from, which is an area I'm not too familiar with, if I'm going to be honest. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. So how are you doing today? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm actually impressed that we're on the same time zone because I was thinking that for <sighs> you, it would be super early in the morning. But... No, nope. I'm now in North Carolina on the East Coast and you are in Florida at the moment, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So I am curious to know a little bit about your background. Do you mind telling me a little bit about yourself? Sure. So, well, I was born, I say Chicago, but it was Chicago suburbs. And so one thing that's different, I spent a lot of time in Brazil, and I know your mm -hmm. husband is also Brazilian. The, the suburbs in Brazil are very different than the suburbs in the States. So typically, like in Sao Paulo or Rio, the suburbs or like the periphery, I guess, would be the <laughs> translation. Those are maybe not the most expensive areas to live. They're not the most desirable areas to live. And actually, in the U.S., it's the opposite. So when you grow up in the suburbs, it's typically very family-friendly, has really good schools, safer than the big cities. Right. So there's just that little difference there. But yeah, I grew up I in the that. west suburbs of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I had a pretty, I guess, normal, <laughs> normal upbringing. And then I yep. went to school at the University of Iowa. Mm -hmm. And then I did my master's in Chicago, downtown Chicago. And then I worked there for a while. And then I had a bit of a existential crisis and <laughs> went to Brazil. <laughs> well, I'm curious to hear about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How did that? So you had an existential crisis. Was it too cold? What 
what caused you to go to Brazil? Because those are very different places. I know. I know. And it's one of those things that it's like, who knows why we (laughs) end up on the path that we end up. But I do think it's really interesting when when we do look back and we see like all the little signs that were there all along. So to backtrack a little bit. So Mm -hmm. I, I studied Spanish at the University of Iowa. I studied abroad in Spain for a semester. And when I graduated, I started working as a Spanish teacher. And I really liked learning Spanish and that whole process, but I I didn't exactly love teaching Spanish. And I think a lot of it is because I was insecure about it, it not being my native language. So I, I relate a lot to other English teachers that are teaching English, and they also have those insecurities because they feel like, oh, my pronunciation is a little bit different, or I have an accent, or, you know, there's a lot of things. Foreign teachers of English then, like Brazilians teaching English, or like French people teaching English, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And what's so funny is on the weekends when I was, so I was working as a Spanish teacher, but on the weekends I would volunteer as an Mm -hmm. ESL teacher at, it was called Neary, or Erie Neighborhood House. It was gotcha. just like, I don't know, it's just like a little community center in a Hispanic neighborhood of Chicago. And I would mm-hmm. go there on Saturdays and I would help people for free as a volunteer. I would help them learn English. And I loved this. Like I gave up my weekends to do <clears throat> this, but for whatever reason, it never crossed my mind uh-huh. to to do that as a job. I don't know why. <laughs> I- I find that it's very uncommon to meet outside of the internet, outside of YouTube, just native English speakers teaching ESL. Like it's it's just weird. It's just not something that comes up in conversation. So I see what you mean. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and I do think that's something for for us to just be more aware of. Like, what am I doing for free that I really love? Or what am I I doing for fun? And maybe just think about that career path. But instead, I was like, no, I'm going to do school counseling. That'll be (laughs) the next step. And I got my master's in school counseling. And then I worked for Chicago Public Schools for a while, first as a Spanish teacher, then as a school counselor. And I think that's when the existential, the quote unquote existential crisis hit me. It was, you know, I had I had done all those steps. You know, you graduate high school, you go to college, you get your degree, you get a job get your master's degree, you get a better job. And I still felt like this is not what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. And I was the youngest person in my department at the school that I was working at by far. I mean, there was a few people that were maybe a little bit older than me, but then a lot of people who were quite a bit older than me. And it kind of gave me a glimpse of my future. And oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And and to be honest, it wasn't like, oh, this is horrible. But it just wasn't really what I wanted for myself. Mm-hmm. And I also found myself like wishing away the time, like counting down the days to the weekend, counting down the months until my next break, yeah. counting down the years until my retirement. And I was <laughs> in my 20s to retire. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to be wishing away my life. You yeah, know, well, like, it sounds like you have a bit of the entrepreneurial spirit in you. I mean, for someone to go from that sort of job into going on YouTube, putting yourself out there in the world, yeah. sounds like the existential crisis made sense. <laughs> it, it did. It made sense. It didn't feel like it made sense at the time. Yeah. It was kind of one of those things like, what's what's wrong with you? Like, right. you've got the best job and you're living in this great city and mm-hmm. the checklist is all checked off, but yeah. you can just feel like inside that I just felt this pull. Like, I really wanted to spend more time, especially in South America, mm-hmm. which I didn't really know much about South America. And so I just decided to take like a year. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, I'm going to take a year off. And And this was before I had children or I wasn't in a serious relationship. So I decided now is the time to go and and be risky because the only person I'm putting at risk is myself. Like Right. For me at least, the only regrets I have are things that I don't do. If I do yes. do something, then it's like that was a choice in that moment. And that's 
that this is what I get from it, you know? Mm -hmm. But I feel like those regrets that you have from not doing something are the ones that really hang over your head yeah. that you'll carry on for years on end and you just got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think I have this visual of myself as like this 80, 90 year old lady <laughs> looking back <laughs> on my life being like, what would you regret more? Yeah. You know, staying where it's yeah. safe and comfortable, even though you feel like mm, something's not right. Or just, you know, throwing yourself out there a little bit and, and living life, taking some risks. And it was so clear to me, like, just just take the risk. See what yeah. happens. So you spent then 10 years in Brazil after that? Yeah. Like so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't plan. <laughs> I saw, um, gosh, you have... I think what, what 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 was the website? It was like stardom, so like famous people stardom something dot com, and it's like Jack Jacqueline Katz's. Okay, um, so funny. <laughs> and it says like you met your husband two weeks after moving there. Is yeah, that right? Oh, this is all like on a website. Yeah, I, I found crazy. it. You're, you are on the internet, girl. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm on the internet. Some of the stuff I find is pretty interesting. Like I see stuff like net worth, and I'm like, ooh, what is this guy? <laughs> I'm like, where are they getting this information from? Right. But I... <laughs> like, as long as they don't know, like, where you live, right? Because that's right. Be well, I'm sure that concern. information is out there, too. It's, <laughs> it's hard nowadays to be anonymous. But yeah, I definitely do not consider myself a, a famous person at that's all. So, so it is, funny. It's, it's comical to see this stuff on the internet. Because I'm like, it's almost like a different person. I don't even know. Whoa. You're funny. You're very accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, but I went to Brazil basically because my friend who decided to come with me, she really wanted to go to Brazil. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, I spoke Spanish, so I thought it would make more sense to go someplace where mm -hmm. I could actually communicate. But she said, no, let's start in Brazil. And, and we actually yeah. traveled to Brazil for about a week for mm -hmm. Carnival the year before we moved. Yeah. It was like a test run. <laughs> yeah, I was like, let's test it out, see what yeah. we think. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And it's so funny for me to like look back and remember that time when I came is like the total gringa, not understanding <laughs> anything, just soaking it all in, you know, with those like fresh eyes. And I met so many amazing people. And then after that trip, my friend and I decided that we wanted to take maybe a year off, six months to a year. So that's when I left my job and we kind of went on a one-way ticket and we were open. We thought we would start in Brazil and then go all over South America, just see what happens. But we ended up staying. I met my husband two weeks after I landed and I started working as an English teacher, which I loved so much. I remember thinking, oh, I cannot believe I'm like being paid. And I was not being paid much at all. <laughs> Very little. About but the I experience. Just, <laughs> it was just so great, like working with adults and people that really wanted to learn and were so interested in the culture. And I felt like I was actually learning even more from them, just you know, I would correct their English and help them, but just learning about the culture and their work and just the everyday yeah. lives. It's uh, a real connection there. You know, yes. I like yeah. as you probably know, my husband is Brazilian. I was his English teacher. And I always Love tell it. people, I'm like, if you're looking for a partner, consider looking for a language teacher because yes. you get on such a deep level very fast. You know, yeah. like I want to practice the third conditional. Let's let's like talk about regrets in your life. And like, yes. you know, like you, you dive so deep. Yes, that it's like therapy. It's just, exactly. It really <laughs> exactly. is. So you're originally from Chicago. Mm -hmm. What is the term? Are you a Chicagoan or? Chicagoan. Chicagoan and yes. Illinois. I have no idea. Would you be an Illinois? Illinoisan? Honestly, Illinois. I don't think I don't think I've ever heard anybody say I'm an okay. Illinoisan. <laughs> I just say I'm from Illinois. But it's interesting because Illinois outside of Chicago is very rural. So okay. I mean, I guess there are a couple. I mean, it's suburbs and and maybe there's a couple cities, but even yeah. so, it's they're more like agricultural cities gotcha uh or just small towns 
at gotcha. the cornfields. So <laughs> do you feel do you feel like growing up and I'm not sure how the Midwest plays into this like Midwest culture and stuff, but do you feel like your upbringing there has impacted just who you are and like your relationship with I mean Brazilians and your husband? Do you see a lot of differences? between you and him, for example? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I grew up uh, so in the suburbs of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of advantages to that because you're very close to the city. So all of mm -hmm. our field trips, we would go to the museums downtown. Our prom, like the high school prom, we did like a a little boat, like a cruise on Lake Michigan. And Ooh. yeah, so there was a lot of really cool things just because we're so close to the city, you can take advantage of all the arts and museums and uh -huh. the sporting events, like all that stuff is right there. So you get like a, a good taste of, of big city life uh -huh. with a little bit of separation. So you're still in like your suburban bubble of, of like safety and gotcha. everyone's kind of the same. But my dad and my mom, when I was, I think like six or seven years old, they bought a farm out in like more like Western Illinois, Western part of Illinois. Wow. So on the weekends, we would also go out to the farm a lot. So they had like a horse farm with all different kinds of animals and things like that. And I started riding horses and spending a lot of time on wow. the farm when I was in like second grade. And that became a huge part of my life all the way through up until about high school. And then in high school, you're just with your friends and <laughs> that's it. Right. So I had this like mix of mm -hmm. city farm growing up, which is kind of unique. I guess I consider myself a little bit of a chameleon in some ways <laughs> that I can easily adapt to a lot of different environments. Mm -hmm. And it could have been because of my upbringing, but I also think it's just part of who I am because I'm the only one, I'm the oldest of four and we're like four kids in five years. So we're very close in age, wow. but I'm the only one that had any interest in learning another language or studying abroad or or even leaving Chicago. So I don't know. There's things that we're just kind of born with that <laughs> we can't gotcha. explain. So like the area around your farm, looking online, I, I see that there's a lot of soy production. There's a lot of agri it's just big agricultural communities in the Midwest up there. Do you have any connection to I'm just trying to get an, an idea of like Chicago, do you guys feel so separate from that that lifestyle in general, or is it is yeah. that agriculture like a an integral part of the state? So I really think it depends on where you live, but there's okay. I think there's a definite separation. Like there's people who are like city people and they don't know anything about <laughs> farming and that type of stuff, and then there's people like when I went to school in Iowa, like I obviously met a lot of people from Iowa and Nebraska who grew up in really small towns and uh, farming communities. But yeah, I, I think there is a pretty big difference. Like it's, it's not so common to meet people who, <laughs> who are both. Okay. Um, but I do think people like can like both. Yes. But it's, there's such different lifestyles. Right. For sure. It's interesting here in Asheville. Sunday, we went to the party and everybody that was from North Carolina there grew up on farms. And it was so unique for me because I, it's so rare in my area of California to meet someone that grew, I mean, someone that grew up on a farm. And they right. were talking about shearing sheep and things yeah. that I'm like, wow, that's never, that hasn't been a conversation right. ever <laughs> for me. Right. But it was so fascinating, you know, just yeah. how, how there are truly so many different lifestyles in the United States. I mean, from one state to the next within the same state, yeah. like yeah. Illinois, it's just fascinating. And I actually read, and I'm curious if this is true. So in the Midwest, you guys have Tornado Alley, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you have a, what do they call it? Underneath the house, the shelter, a storm shelter oh, sort um, of thing? So we had basements. It's very, mm -hmm. like here in Florida, I think because it's like a flood plain, you can't <laughs> dig too deep. You'll hit water right away. Right. Um, or do they call it a floodplain? I can't remember the word for that. Uh, it's pretty hard to be able to have a basement just because of the soil. Right. But in, in the Midwest, it's, it's like a lot of clay, I guess, is the uh -huh. soil. And 
There's not, a, it's not swampy like it is here. So almost everybody, I can't think of anybody that didn't have a basement. So it's like almost like mm -hmm. an extra extension of your house because it's the same size of your house a lot of times. Yeah. And it's just this extra big space room. Um, but a lot of it is because of tornadoes as well. So if okay. there's a tornado, you would hear the siren going mm -hmm. off and it's just like, nee. so and then it does happen in Chicago. Uh, yeah, not so much in the city. I mean, it has okay. happened in the city, but usually it goes, yeah, Tornado Alley kind of goes around the city of Chicago. It's more like rural areas that gotcha. Tornado Alley passes through. And I'm not even sure if like where we lived in the suburbs is technically like in Tornado Alley, but we did have tornadoes. Okay. I mean, I can remember several times when we had to go into the basement and there were a few times when um, like out by my parents' farm, there was damage, like a shed was just like picked up and thrown. <laughs> like, like in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Wow. Oh my goodness. And and so sirens went off. What sort of, are these sirens on top of buildings or like what? Um, what? I don't even know. I think maybe they're from even like a, a local fire station or something okay. like that. I don't even know exactly where they come from. It was just what we knew. Like uh -huh. that's, the tornado that's the tornado siren. You just have to take cover. And I, I mean, it's crazy when a tornado happens, at least what I remember, it's been a while. Yeah. It gets so still right before it kind of comes through. Like you go outside, it's like silent, very silent. There's like no wind wow. whatsoever. It's like a and, vacuum And or then something. all of a sudden, you know, things start picking up. But it's like really eerie almost. It's like, oh, my gosh, there's like nothing. <laughs> Man. Take so you've, you've have you seen one? then I haven't seen one and I I think just because I have I've been like usually in the basement or something right. like that when I haven't been not outside a storm watcher chase them yeah chase. oh yeah um, storm chaser is that tornado chaser isn't that a thing yeah yeah, yeah. but I've so. seen you know trees down and some people lose like the roof of their house or stuff like that but that's nuts and and in your basement did you have a lot of stored food canned food yeah so a tornado usually passes over fairly quickly so right. I don't think we had anything to for that purpose uh -huh. that'd be more in hurricane like now where you're at right yes yeah where <laughs> we're at you kind of prepare for stuff but even uh -huh. a hurricane it's like I mean the damage could last a few days I right. guess that's true like you if you you know don't have a generator or something like that like stuff that yeah. needs to be refrigerated could easily go bad but it it'll pass through quickly you know right. and minutes or hours depending on on how big it is yeah um it, it doesn't take like days but it could you know be raining for days or if a lot of trees are down and power is out it could take days for that to to get back up. right that's fascinating yeah. Yeah. So sorry to hop from one thing to the other, okay. but it's so it's there's a lot of things when I think of culture, obviously food plays a huge role. Yeah. And um, Chicago, I mean, has two things I know of that are very famous. Do you mind talking a little bit about the food and then sure, I can chime in sure. with anything I know, which is probably very little. <laughs> yeah. And actually, one quick thing about the tornadoes that I wanted to mention is oh, yeah. at school, like we would do tornado drills where they would have like the practice siren and then we would all have to go on the floor and usually like along the the walls of the classroom so that if a window got blown in the glass would <gasps> blow over you so fascinating like, and then you would just crouch down in like a fetal position and cut put your hands over your head against the and walls? that was like like yeah the against the walls. walls like your head facing like the wall and and then you go into the fetal position hands over your head and just wait there so we would do that drill every year at school <laughs> that is important information so we had earthquake yes. drills growing up and it was ah. always the, the siren would go off and then we would have to run underneath the desk because it was if things fall down you have yes. to be <laughs> yes yeah not get hit in the head from that yeah oh that's so true the debris yeah, it's funny. Natural, natural disasters across the U.S. All the crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. But about the food, I think Chicago's is well known for deep dish pizza. Mm -hmm. The Chicago style hot dog is pretty popular. And like 
uh, Italian beef sandwiches. Okay. There's also like popcorn and things like that. But I think those are like the three things that I think are kind of typical of Chicago. Okay. And what's what's your go to? Like, do you do you love food from there? Is, is it yeah. something that you would you look for out in Florida? <laughs> no, I mean, out in Florida, no, I don't typically look for it. Deep dish pizza, I personally don't really like. It's just okay. too thick. I prefer a thin crust pizza. A Chicago hot dog is really good. It's definitely good. And like Italian beefs, there's like Portillo's, which is a pretty famous chain restaurant. And I do think a Portillo's opened here in Orlando. And I know people from the Chicago area are very excited are out in to get line there. waiting for it. <laughs> their hot dog and their so Italian beef fix. Yeah. <laughs> Culture tip. A Chicago style pizza is usually just called a deep dish pizza. Like its name, it's baked in a deep round pan. The crust is usually thicker than a traditional New York style pizza. Usually there are more toppings, chunky tomato sauce. It's a filling meal. A Chicago style hot dog is a beef hot dog on a poppy seed bun. But what's very specific about it is the toppings. Chicago-style hot dogs usually have mustard, relish, celery salt, chopped onions, sliced tomatoes, a pickle spear, and peppers, sport peppers to be specific. So they're medium in heat and sort of tangy. Different, huh? Italian beef number three is a classic Chicago street food, and basically it's thinly sliced roast beef on an Italian roll or baguette, and it's usually served wet or dipped in gravy. So gravy is juice that comes off of beef. It's like a broth almost, and some people will get their whole sandwich dipped. Others will just get it wet, so they might have a splash of sauce on the top. Then, of course, there's some sweet peppers, maybe some pickled veggie mix that they call jardinera, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And yeah, so that is the Italian beef. Back to the show. Jackie, I'm curious about accent. I have an idea of a Chicago accent. I don't know if it's true. You sound the same as me, at least from my, I mean, from this time that we've spoken. Is there a Chicago accent? So, yes, there is. And it's a really good question. Um, I think because I've been teaching English for a long time and I've been living abroad and things like that, my accent has gotten much uh, smoother or not not as strong. But I would say what identifies a Chicago accent is typically the A's and the O's. So, for example, mom, like my mom, so they're like "Ah, hot dog. It's like the. Oh, wow. Chicago. I love that. It's kind of. <laughs> Hang on, let me turn it on real quick. <laughs> Can you say that again? I love that. <laughs> like, mom? Mom? Mom. And that's, and actually, that's how I do say it. Like, if I call my mom, I'm like, hey, mom, mom. My that's dad, so it's more like, ah. Eh. Ah. Eh. Yeah. So I, I think, um, like, Jackie is my, would, it's kind of um, like a stronger, more dramatic A. And the O sounds like an A. And I remember when I went to the West Coast, when I was 18, I did this like outward bound trip where we did camping and whitewater rafting. And I was with a bunch of people from the West Coast. And that was my first time like ever being with people that were not from (laughs) the Chicago area. And they were all laughing so hard because I was talking about my socks my socks were wet. Love that. (laughs) And I was saying like my bag like my sleeping bag. And they were like, oh my gosh, your accent is so strong. And to me, I was like, what? I don't have an accent. (laughs) What are you talking about? Wait, wait. So let's just go through these. So you said, (laughs) I'd say mom. You say? Mom. I say hot dog. You say? Hot dog. I say bag. Bag. Okay. Pretty similar. Socks? Socks. Yeah. Can you guys hear the difference? It's just more like, ah, yeah. Yeah. Or like the book is on (laughs) the table. On the table. (laughs) Or 
Uh, Chicago. How do you say Chicago? Chicago. Chicago. Uh, yeah, it's, it's got that. It's uh, like more open. Right, yeah. right, right, right. That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's so fun hearing the different accents. And I, I do think that like being elsewhere kind of diminishes it <laughs> because true. I didn't even notice during our conversation that any word that was particularly different. Right. And, and I notice it even in myself that I, I don't. I don't think I speak with an accent that much yeah. anymore. But when I spend a lot of time, like with my friends and family, then it comes out more for yeah. sure. Yeah. Fun. So Love funny. It. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you were to go back to Chicago now, how would you spend, like if you had three days there, how would you spend those three days to have like the ultimate experience. Mm. Okay. All my family, well, my sister, actually, she and her family, they moved out to California a couple years ago because of her husband's work. But they're originally from Chicago. And I have a really big family. So my cousins and my grandma, who's going to be 100 next <gasps> week, she's Congrats still there. Uh, my aunts and uncles, like everybody is there. So when I go back, I visit family a lot mm -hmm. and friends. Mm -hmm. If I were going like as a tourist, because some people are going for the first time, I highly, highly recommend doing an architecture tour. So Chicago architecture is beautiful and they have tours that you you get on the Chicago River. So it's just mm -hmm. like a boat tour and they explain everything and you just kind of sit there and take it all in and learn about the history and the architecture. It's really, really a great thing to do. Who's the architect? Geary? Is that Frank Geary that did a lot uh, of the stuff there's there? There's Frank Lloyd Wright. Who Frank did Lloyd a lot. Wright, yes. Yeah, especially in the suburb of Oak Park. Okay. He has, um, there's some homes that are very easily identifiable as like Frank Lloyd Wright <laughs> homes. And I don't know much about architecture at all, but it's just, it's very, very beautiful. And just learning about the history and what the buildings were originally used for and what they are right. now. It's, it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I just watched a doc, um, a Ted talk about architecture because I was, did a recent episode on home improvement and ah. it's crazy how architecture impacts our like emotional experience. Yeah. You know, so you see something and it, it just makes your day better if it looks so good. True. It's so <laughs> <But> true. Anyway. <laughs> so I'm like, and I need to clean my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh, me too. Um, so sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, I think Chicago's got a really great music scene. They're known for uh -huh. like jazz and, and blues. Kingston Mines is a place that I used to go to. They would have live blues music. And I don't I mean, you can just any type of interest that you have, you can easily find it. Chicago's very similar to New York City. Mm -hmm. I went to New York month or two ago and I literally I felt like I was in Chicago but just a confusing version because I know my way around <laughs> Chicago really well <laughs> like it looks very similar but I don't know where I am <laughs> yeah so a tourist should see the architecture they should go to like a jazz club yes. to get the feeling of the blues or yeah jazz music the jazz uh-huh and then what else would would you recommend doing um, other than Portillo's you said too right yeah For Portillo's food? is good for food. I think the the hot dogs and the Italian beefs. I mean, there's like Michigan Avenue for shopping. There's Millennium mm -hmm. Park that has like that famous bean. Right. It's like that silver bean that you can kind of see all different like reflected parts of the city. Just, is that what that's about? I was wondering. Yeah, I know. It's kind of <laughs> random. <laughs> I'm like, did you guys, is it just because you're growing beans there? I, I, yeah, I actually like, haven't looked into it. Bean? Yeah, no, I think the the way it's it's shaped is that uh -huh. you, you capture, it reflects different, you can see like the clouds in the sky, you see the lake, you see the buildings behind it, you get all kinds of like little different images of the city. Isn't the, the name is Cloud Gate, right? Of the bean, the official name? Oh, I don't even know. To me, it's just okay. the bean. <laughs> oh, the bean. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, that's it probably the be. easiest. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot to do. I mean, when I lived there, I, I would just leave my apartment and just walk around all day long without a plan. And there's always like street festivals and little coffee shops and just you know, random street performers or there's always stuff going on. Okay. 
that is just kind of a, a fun surprise. Farmers yeah. markets, like art galleries. There's everything. Lots of cool things. Yeah. And when would you go there? Do you think um, it's like <laughs> April to? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I'm guessing I, summer. I would avoid the winter, <laughs> the winter season, unless you really like stream cold and wind um <laughs> but this year it actually hasn't even been that bad but okay most of the time yeah the winter is is kind of rough I think mm. yeah April all the way through October I would say would be probably the best time to go I had a list of rapid fire questions for you but I asked most of them so here's just one last one why do you live in Florida now? Okay, that is a good question. So when we decided to leave Brazil, we were kind of all over the place because when you have an online business, mm -hmm. you have the freedom to live wherever you want in the world, which is yeah. amazing. But sometimes having all those options makes you a little bit crazy because then it's like, well, what if this is a better option? Or what if this is a better option? It's like the decision-making fatigue and overwhelm is is very real. We didn't want to go back to Chicago, not because I don't like Chicago. I do love Chicago, but we wanted someplace different. And we were between Colorado and Florida, which are two very different places. But they're the hot places to be. I always hear people, oh, no, I want to move close to Denver. Or I want to yes. move. Yeah, I, I yeah. hear that a lot. Yeah. And so we actually, we visited Colorado a number of times. We really loved it there. We were pretty set on going to Colorado. But then we went there in the winter time <laughs> and we're like, oh, I and you're like, I don't how. want that again. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, I've been spoiled living in Brazil for the past 10 years. This yeah. is going to be hard. And logistically, where we are here in Florida, it's very close to Brazil. We go back and forth a lot. It's very easy to get to Chicago, too. My yeah. parents have a place on the beach here in Florida, so they come down a oh, lot. Perfect. So logistically, this is a good place to be. Weather-wise, yep. it's a good place to be. It's very Brazilian. Um, there's a huge Brazilian community yeah. here, which was easier on all of us, actually, not just my husband and my kids, but my oldest, he was eight when we moved. He just turned 13. Woo! <laughs> Teenager. <laughs> yes. But for him, um, he really wanted to be where there's other Brazilians because he didn't want to feel like, oh, you know, like a, so his, a, a foreigner. Yeah. So is he, so he grew up there then. Yeah. Oh, so he wow. was in third grade when we moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. So he did all of his schooling and he didn't go to a bilingual school. It was a Brazilian school, yeah. but I always spoke with him and his brother in English. Okay. So they always knew how to speak it. Yeah. But when he came here and he did fine, he, spoke English perfectly. Yeah. Nobody even knew he spoke another language. But he told me there was some vocabulary that he was missing, yeah. obviously, yeah. just because he's not living in it. Right. But that is true yeah. about your, I, I mean, last time I went to Florida, I just felt like, wow, I could be in like a little yeah. town of Brazil with all these, yes. with the amount of Portuguese and Spanish speakers there. It's nuts. Oh, yeah. So you get an yeah. opportunity to practice on a regular oh, basis every right? day all day I was just at Starbucks yesterday mm -hmm. and I was looking around the Starbucks and every single person in the Starbucks was speaking Portuguese and do they recognize you like um sometimes people do yeah. I mean I don't I don't know so I just kind <laughs> of do my thing yeah. but sometimes people will be like oh are you Jackie and yeah. uh say hi or sometimes they'll want to take a oh, picture you're celebrity <laughs> <laughs> it's very cute so is there anything else you'd like to share about Illinois, Chicago, yourself? Yeah, I think everyone should go visit Chicago for sure if you get the chance. Mm -hmm. It's a really beautiful city. Illinois is a beautiful state too. There's just a lot of different areas of it. Another common thing, I guess I would say, about people from the Chicago area, in the summertime, we would go up north. So a lot of People would go up to Michigan or to Wisconsin. My parents, for example, have a lake house in northern Wisconsin. So I spent a lot of time there on the lake. Mm -hmm. Lake Michigan is huge and rough. So it's kind of, it, it, it's a little bit hard to be like, I don't know. I mean, you could maybe do water skiing and tubing and stuff, but it's pretty, it's a, it's a really big and, and 
wild lake. So okay. a lot of times we go to the smaller, <laughs> the smaller more manageable lake. ones. Are there many around Chicago to go to? Smaller um, ones? Yeah, there's... I guess there's like Fox Lake. People go up to Lake Geneva. Mm -hmm. If you go further north, I mean, Minnesota has got a million lakes too. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think people tend to drive to go north. north. Gotcha. Or yeah, either to Michigan, which I guess is not, it could be north if you're going to the UP or something. Yeah. But <laughs> Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, a lot of people tend to go to those areas to kind of get away yeah. a little bit and be more in nature, on the lake. Amazing. Doing all that type of stuff. Yeah. Love it. So mm -hmm. that's what you got to do. You've got a long list of things to do now in yes. the area. I will make sure to list them all in the episode notes so that you guys, if you do want to travel to Illinois or Chicago, you've got everything in front of you. You know what a local recommends. I think yeah. the, the most valuable thing you can have is to have a local's perspective on things. It's so, true. Where can listeners find you? I'm on YouTube. My mm -hmm. uh, YouTube channel is called Ask Jackie. And I specifically teach Portuguese speakers. So I have a lot of explanations in Portuguese. I have an online course as well, which is a bilingual course. So it's that perfect mix of being able to hear the explanations in Portuguese, see the examples, compare between English and Portuguese, and then watch a lesson about the same topic, but going into some more detail 100% in English. Because a lot of people, when you try to learn entirely in English, especially as a beginner, or if you're trying to learn new things, it, it can be really frustrating and exhausting. So it helps a lot to have those explanations in your native language mm -hmm. at first, but then you don't want to get stuck in that. You have to have a lot of comprehensible input, which is why this podcast is so amazing. Um, Thank you. And just opportunities to practice as well. So we talk, a, I talk a lot about that balance between studying and understanding and then just immersing yourself and, and practicing as much as possible. Amazing. And uh, once again, all those links will be in the episode notes. Thank you so much for being on the show today. It Thank was a pleasure talking to you. Of course. Yeah, this was super fun. We'll have yeah. to chat some more. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I do have to admit that while speaking with Jackie, I didn't notice very many differences in the way that we spoke. But after she mentioned the A's and O's in certain words and how she pronounced them differently, I listened again and I could hear many different examples of the Chicago accent throughout this audio. Truly, if you find accents interesting as much as I do, I would listen to this audio one more time from the beginning and try and see if you can pick out those words. I'll give you a few hints. Classroom. Glass. Oh my gosh. So yeah, do it. Have some fun. And until next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.